Okay, today's lesson will be on vector addition. I will touch base with the basic of using uh, different methods of uh, additions to, to add up two different forces. The first method that we are looking at is parallelogram method. Okay, we will use this method to add two uh, vectors and we will, I will run through the methods and I, at the end of the day I also run through some of the common mistakes and maybe some of the uh, one of the important thing that the students need to look out for okay so now for parallelogram method okay for, for using of uh, adding of two forces the let's say we have two vectors here two forces okay one is 40 newton the other one is 20 newton the they are spaced apart by 50 degree okay so this is the question so usually the questions will actually tell they tell you to actually find the resultant force okay so you will actually supposed to find the resultant force okay, which is why you, why you need to add up these two forces to find the resultant force so the method that we are using here is parallelogram method huh? okay now uh, let's transfer the question to us to the answer paper okay so the questions I will leave you at the side here okay so it's for easy to re uh, for easy references huh? so it's 40 Newton 20 Newton and 50 degree apart so for starter right so let's say for starter I would like to use maybe a scale, okay, a scale of let's say um, one cm is to five newton, okay. So this normally what I call the first method. What I call is a monkey see, monkey do, ah. Uh. So monkey see the questions, okay. Then monkey will actually copy the question. But the only difference is you actually do it according to your scale. So that's why it's called scale drawing also. Okay, so vector addition. So, uh. 1 cm to 1 newton, so let's start with, you can start with any force, but uh, let's start with maybe 40 newtons, okay. So 40 newton, so 40 newton for 1 cm to 5 newton, it will be, it will be 8 cm. Okay, so let's say I start with here, so this is the beginning, okay. Now, so 8 cm, okay, you will be just right here, 8 cm, okay. So what you do is, once you have have the first arrow copy 40 newton 40 newton so what you are going to do you are going to label the thing okay, like i say whatever you see whatever you copy so i see 40 newton i will actually write 40 newton here okay so 40 newton just a side note for you i will just label in the bracket in pencil okay this will be 8 cm just a reminder only okay so in pencil one in brackets okay you don't need to write okay when you're answering the question then after that, based on the question there is a 50 degree Okay, a part, then you get a 20 newton. So, using a protractor, so you have to measure 50 degree. Okay, the given the protractor, measure 50 degree, do a small marking. Okay, so that's my 50 degree, I'll do my 50 degree here. After that, I will have a 20 uh, newton coming out from the same location. Uh, 20 newton, based on my scale, it will roughly give me 4 cm. 4 cm at 50 degrees, so roughly this location. 4 cm at this angle. Uh. 4 cm. Okay. Okay, so at this angle here, remember just now I have used a micro projector to mark. Okay, to mark 50 degree. So remember this angle here, you are supposed to use a protractor to measure. Uh. So same thing, label 20 newton. Okay, uh, write in pencil again. Okay, this 20 newton will be 4 cm. Okay, pencil don't need to write. Huh? So now this is the beginning. Okay, the step one. What I call the monkey see, monkey do. Huh? So whenever you see the question, you are going to transform it okay, in the exact dimension but with scale, based on the scale that given. So the next step that we do is we are going to actually create a four sided figure, what we call a parallelogram. Okay, so the easy thing that we have is. So what we are doing do is we're going to get a four-sided figure. We are going to the figure the figure is actually what we call a parallelogram. So we are going to actually produce two parallel sides. Okay, so the, we will start with the first side, let's say the uh, 20 newton. So I will do the basic uh, method of getting a parallel line. I will do the sliding method. And so what I do is I will take note of the thing. Okay. And after that I will slide to the opposite end. Okay. Slide to the opposite end. Okay, then after that I will produce the line that I want. Okay, draw lightly first, ah, huh? draw lightly. Okay, so this is the line. So same thing, I will duplicate the side to here. 
Okay, so this side is 4 cm, this side will be 4 cm also. So remember the sliding to get the parallel side. So now I'll measure 4 cm. Okay, so 4 cm I do the marking here, so you'll be here. Okay, so at this point in time, remember this is the line that you want. Okay, the back here is extra. So what you need to do, so what you're going to do is the extra, you just erase it. Okay. So once you have it, okay, you can draw a solid line. Okay, remember it's 4 cm, uh, 4 cm, you will stop here only. Okay, so now repeat the same thing, produce the second pair of parallel lines. Okay, using the sliding method. So this side, okay, I will slide, okay, all the way down to the opposite end. Okay, once I slide to the opposite end, okay, I'll get the shape out. So, close it. Okay, so now I will actually have this side, which is the parallel side. This side, which is the parallel side for this. So this is what we mean by a close uh, four-sided figure, parallelogram method. Okay, so now, remember, this is the end that is closed. Huh? So at this point in time, remember, when you produce the four-sided figure, okay, the first rule of monkey see, monkey do is still the same. You, the questions only have two forces, two vectors. Your answer will only have two vectors here. So when you produce the two parallel sides, remember don't put arrow here. It's just a parallel sides. Okay. Uh, in some textbook you'll see that you actually draw in dotted line. Okay. In dotted line or solid line actually doesn't really matter. But try to be consistent. If one side is solid line, the other just make sure it's solid line. If it's one side is dotted, make sure it's dotted. Okay. So now for the third step. Okay. Remember, this is the starting point where you start. After you Merge. After you draw the parallel side, this is actually what we call the ending point, opposite side. So what you are going to do is, you are going to draw a line from the starting point to the ending point. Okay, starting point, ending point. Okay, so this is what we call the starting to ending. Huh? Okay. At this moment in time, once you you are almost there already. Okay, once you have this line, this is what we call the resultant force, the resultant line. Okay, so what you do is you're going to draw two arrow here. Draw two arrow here. This double arrow will represent the resultant force. Okay, so remember, label it as resultant force. Sometimes the questions will have some symbol, maybe RF or FR. Okay, so this is the resultant force. Okay, so, uh, before you uh, move on to the next question, remember, you touch up on some of the marking here. Okay, remember, if there's small, small things, just erase it. Okay, so eventually this will actually be the answer. S adding these two forces will produce a resultant force which is this particular line. This line actually is the resultant force which is why you put a double arrow here. Okay, so this is the uh, resultant force. It usually most of the time the questions will actually ask you to write down the resultant force. So the answers that we are looking for is actually resultant force. So how are we going to find the resultant force? Same thing, by drawings. Okay, using your drawing. Now what you do, you do is measure the line. So from the start end, okay, all the way to the ending here. Let's say for based on my drawing, it will be 10.9 cm. So if it's 10.9 cm, okay, 10.9 cm, given that the skill is 1 cm is 5 newton here. Let's say 1 cm is 5 newton. So with a 10.9 cm, Okay, multiply by 5 Newton, 1 cm is what 5 Newton, so 10.9 cm will roughly, okay, 10.9 and 5 Newton, you will give you a total of 54.5 Newton. Okay, so this will be the answer for the resultant force. Remember, other than resultant force, we also need one more thing. Okay, all vectors actually come with two things, you know, magnitude and your direction so the it based on the question so if, example the question could be asking for uh, the di direction of the resultant force with respect to the 20 newton which is here okay with respect to 20 newton so let's say i label this as angle a okay so angle a okay angle a remember i put a bracket here okay in red just to take note angle a is with respect to 20 newton okay so how do i get angle a what you do is you're going to get a protractor, measure, okay, put a protractor, okay, measure the angle between RF and 20 Newton. Okay, reading for the marking, it looks like 
31 degree. Okay, so it will be 31 degree. Okay, but sometimes the question will actually ask for another angle. It could be, it could be uh, RF with respect to 40 newton, which is here. I label it angle B. Okay, so if it's angle B, either one, uh, one angle is good enough already. So it's angle B. Angle B here, I may read, is with respect to 40 newtons. Okay, same thing. What you do is measure. Okay, to get the angle between 40 and RF, get a protractor. Okay, mount it on 40 newton. After that, measure the angle between them. So from the look of this, it looks like 20, 80, 15, 16, 17, 8, 17. Okay, it looks like 17 degree. Okay, 17 degree. Okay, between them. Okay, 17 or 18. Okay, roughly. So you have to be very accurate, huh? Okay, so this will be the answer that you are looking for. Okay, the answers, I repeat, usually come with the magnitude and one of the angle, one of them. Okay, so in the short, okay, this is how we do actually parallelogram, uh, better addition using parallelogram methods. Okay, a few small things that you need to take note. Always, always be careful is the first step. Whatever you see, okay, you will copy down. Okay, then after that, remember the labeling. You will see two forces with arrows. You will have two forces with arrows, followed by a 40 newton. Label the 40 newton. Label the 40 newton. Not the cm, ah, not the cm. Okay. The second step: produce the four-sided figure, the two parallel sides, by using the sliding method. But after that, connect the start point to the end point. Okay. Then that after that, remember to put a double arrow. There will be the. Then after that, label it as resultant force. Okay. So once you are done, okay, measure your answer. Okay, the answers are all found in the measurements. Okay, so this is the basic of how we use vector additions using uh, vector addition using parallelogram method. Okay, so some of the precautions like I mentioned before, the arrows and the labelings. Okay, so please take note. Okay, before I end off, okay, I'd like to show you one variation of the questions. Okay, the question will look like this. Okay, take a look at the question here. The you, and you compare to the questions that you see previously. Okay, so I put them side by side, huh? Okay, you compare the two questions. Okay, they looks almost identical. Okay, the only difference is in the direction. You'll find that the one on your left, okay, the arrows, the forces is actually pointing away from the starting point. The one on your right, you'll find that the arrows, the forces is actually pointing towards the starting point. Okay, for vector additions, remember. Before you start on the page, or before you start using the method, one thing to take note is you have to be careful is the arrows, the forces. The forces for parallel logarithm method to work, the forces has to point away from the starting point. Okay, so once once you do this, once you have this, what you're gonna do is you need to actually do a bit of shiftings. Okay, let me duplicate the question here. Huh? So this will be 20 newton, this will be 40 newton, this will be 50 degree. So what you need to do now is what we call a shifting. Okay, shift the forces. So because what if your force is x at these directions, up diagonally upwards to the top right corner, is actually equivalent to actually the same forces of the same magnitude pulling the object in the same direction. So this force is actually this particular force. Okay, so this will be uh, twenty newton. 40 newton pointing towards or what you call pushing away to the bottom right corner so it's the same as me extending it just shifting it downwards okay in the same line okay 40 newton pushing bottom right okay it's the same as me pulling bottom right okay so eventually what I'm doing is I'm actually creating a replica replica of the force this is actually replicated in this manner okay angle Basic math will tell you vertically opposite angle. So this will be still having the same angle. Okay, 50 degree. So when you look at your parallelogram method, remember, don't if the forces are pointing towards the starting point, don't start doing your parallel line. Don't do your monkey see, monkey do that method first. The first step you have to do is, you remember, you must shift the forces such that the forces are actually acting away from the starting point. Only when you have this particular orientation, Okay, the forces are away from the 
starting point, then you can start to do your parallelogram method like outline in the first 10 minutes of the, this video. Okay, so please pay attention to the small, small details and the small, small presentations when you have your answers. Other than that, I think you should be on the safe side already. Okay, after this, okay, get a few questions and actually practice the answers. Okay, okay, thanks a lot.